All right, Stephen. Uh, not real sure uh, where you're needing help. So, anyways, I'll try to provide as much help uh, as I can uh, for receiving uh, GOES uh, 16 uh, satellite images using a Raspberry Pi and uh, in your computer. Uh, what you want to do, uh, a good place to start is to do a Google search for Go 16 uh, software for Raspberry Pi. And then uh, you can go right here and uh, you can kind of, it'll show you some of the things that you need hardware wise. Of course you're going to need a Raspberry Pi and uh, I'm using a, a Pi 3B Plus. Uh, you're also going to need an RTL SDR uh, the one I'm using is the uh, new elect um, is the smart T XTR it's the little gray one and uh, anyways it does higher frequencies I think you can get away with one of these other ones uh, but anyways I went ahead and that's the one that I'm using uh, you're also going to need an LNA that's a low noise amplifier and a saw filter and, uh, and again I use this one right here it's a uh, it's all built in and uh, you'll need that to go with your Raspberry Pi and your uh, and your SDR. So that's the hardware that you're going to need. And then uh, you're also going to need a uh, a parabolic grid antenna. It's a Wi-Fi uh, antenna. And Stephen, I'm pretty sure that you have one. Uh, but anyways, uh, if there's anybody else uh, that's watching this video, uh, that you're you're going to have to have the uh, uh, you know the parabolic uh, antenna. Uh, also, uh, cables, SMA mail uh, to uh, mail, uh, that goes to uh, from the dish, and I think there's an end connector. Anyways, you'd want a, uh, a connector that would swap it from uh, the end connection uh, to the SMA. Uh, that way you could uh, plug it into your uh, the saw filter, and then of course the filter goes into uh, the, uh, the SDR. Uh, but anyways, that's the hardware that you're going to need. Uh, then also, you're going to need some software. Uh, so you're going to want to uh, you're you're going to want to download the Raspbian Light image. Uh, the Light image is uh, since we're just going to be using this for receiving GOES uh, 16 uh, stuff, we don't need it bloated with a bunch of software that we're never going to use. So if you can get the Ras the Raspbian Light image. And you're also going to need a program called Etcher. And what Etcher does is uh, once you've got the uh, disk image, uh, you install Etcher onto your Windows PC. And then uh, you can uh, uh, basically format your uh, SD card and, uh, and install the, uh, the disk image to the, uh, to the SD card. Uh, so anyways, that's what you'll need there. And... Uh, Anyways, uh, you're also going to need to set up your Wi-Fi. So, you know, if you go to this resource right here, click on uh, follow this procedure, and uh, you'll need to set the Wi-Fi up because uh, once you put the card into the, uh, uh, you know, the Raspberry Pi, you're going to need a way to, to uh, have the Pi linked to your network so that you can get in and, and uh, do some updates uh, and control the Pi. Uh, so anyways, uh, once you do get uh, everything, your, your Wi-Fi and stuff set up and working, uh, you know, from there uh, you want to do a sudo apt update and then a sudo apt district upgrade. That way you can upgrade to the latest uh, Raspbian Pi image and then uh, do an sudo, uh, sudo reboot. And then once it comes back on, uh, you know, you SSH uh, back into uh, the Pi. I'm going to show you here in a minute uh, how to do that. Uh, but anyways, uh, you, you'll do it all through uh, SSH, and then you'll receive the images uh, from the Pi to your desktop uh, through FTP. And uh, we'll show you that here after a while, too. Uh, so anyways, uh, once you uh, do get the Pi to where it's connected to your internet, and you can SSH into it, uh, run this command right here. Uh, the sudo apt install git build essentials cmake and uh, some, some other libraries uh, that the software needs. And uh, once you get that uh, installed onto your Pi, uh, go through and, and uh, run this command right here, git clone, and of course this uh, uh, web address here, it'll get the software you need. Just kind of follow this tutorial here. It'll get you 
it'll get you set up and uh, you just do it exactly like it says and uh, you'll have your Pi uh, all set up and ready. Uh, you can test your uh, RTL uh, at this point after you reboot. You just run this command here, RTL underscore test, and it'll show you uh, some information about your SDR. That way you know, you know, that it's, that it, you know, it's all working properly. Uh, next, of course, go through here and install Ghost Tools. Ghost Tools are the tools that you're going to need uh, for uh, receiving the packets and uh, building uh, the images and stuff, putting all them packets back together. Uh, so anyways, go through and install Ghost Tools onto your Raspberry Pi. And, uh, and once you get that done, uh, go through here and just kind of follow this tutorial step by step. And uh, create a, a file here called goesreceive.config and then uh, copy this information and paste it onto your uh, you know your your goes.config uh, file that you made and then save it uh, because you'll you'll be using uh, that right there uh, and then uh, roughly point your uh, antenna at the satellite and then again here's instructions on uh, on how to do it uh, what I did, um, I actually downloaded an app uh, for my cell phone, and uh, anyways, uh, it was a compass, and uh, I used it to uh, point it uh, at the uh, at the satellite in the for the degrees and all that that I needed. I'm pretty sure I found all this information uh, here in this tutorial. Uh, so, anyways, I also used another app. Uh, it was the same app actually, uh, but anyways, it gave a degrees uh, for pointing the dish. And that it's all going to be pointed to a certain uh, degree. Uh, so, anyways, uh, you'll have to get the uh, dish pointed exactly at the satellite. Uh, it it needs to be right at it. If it's off just a little bit, it'll make a huge difference. Uh, so, anyways, you'll want to get that uh, dish dialed in. And once you do, get it locked down to where the wind can't blow it around, and it's got a good rigid uh, mount. And then uh, once you get the, the hardware set up and the software set up, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll run uh, some commands. Uh, like I said, just kind of follow this tutorial, get everything set up. And you can see uh, here, you know, you can type this in and it should bring you to the, to the web page. Or uh, do the Google search. And uh, anyways, again, that was Go 16 software for Raspberry Pi. Here's a step-by-step -step tutor tutorial, and uh, that's the same information, uh, same same website, I think. If not, it'll, it'll get you there. Uh, but anyways, uh, we'll be back here in just a second. It's right here to kind of give you an idea of what I got going on. The Raspberry Pi, of course, is in that box. It's weatherproof. And that cord is 120 volts. In the future, I'm going to change it to uh, to 12 volts. All right, so uh, we've given it a little bit of time, and uh, I've had some uh, drop packets, and uh, so anyways, I don't normally get that many. Uh, I guess conditions are kind of rough uh, right now, uh, but we have received enough information uh, to where it writ, um, you know, about four images here. Uh, so anyways, for the demonstration purposes of this video, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll receive uh, the images that we've uh, uh, downloaded from uh, the with the the go 16 satellite so uh, the way we get them from the Pi to our computer is uh, to use an FTP program uh, I like to use filezilla and uh, so with filezilla you would go to your host which is the IP address uh, where your uh, Raspberry Pi is on the network And then user's name, password, port 
port. Port's usually port 21, and then there's a like a secure FTP. I think that port's uh, port 22. Uh, but anyways, I've just got mine set up uh, for just regular uh, FTP, which is port 21. And uh, so we've logged in, and you see uh, Go 16 right here. It, it made this folder. Uh, when it re sometimes it'll receive Go 17 uh, from the, the two satellites that's up there. Go 17 will shoot over an image every once in a while to Go 16, and then it'll download the image, uh, and it'll put it in the Go 17 uh, file. Uh, and also, uh, the National Weather Service will upload uh, information of there's stations out there that broadcast uh, shore to ship and uh, anyways uh, they send out uh, good information about the wave height and, and uh, currents and stuff like that uh, to be broadcasted out via weather facts and uh, stuff like that so anyways uh, sometimes there'll be some stuff from the National Weather Service uh, for right now um, we'll go ahead and we'll download the images that we have and it's across our local network, so we're not really using the internet. Uh, we're just using the network uh, to uh, to pull these files in. And they're pretty big files too, so it's actually moving uh, at a pretty decent rate of speed. All right, so once we uh, we get those, uh, we will go to the folder uh, where we downloaded them. which is right here and then we can see our images here's a real that's a real-time image of the earth and the sun at night time uh, it'll just be dark you won't be able to see the colors and stuff um, but anyways uh, you, you can see uh, it's pretty cool these are the clouds that's over the United States. Uh, just a pretty neat image. And uh, the software does add the borders of the, uh, the states, the countries, and stuff like that. Uh, th this is real-time information, uh, you know, that you can look at. And it's pretty neat. Um, one of the favor one of my favorite. Uh, bands as uh, channel 15 enhanced and uh, of course you get a lot of different images uh, but this is the one I like to use the most of course you can see in uh, South America there's a lot of looks like thunderstorms and things like that what I'm more interested is our local weather and uh, this is a uh, Saturday uh, March the 13th at 2.35 in the afternoon and uh, this is the uh, you know the weather that we have going on right now so anyways and you can zoom in you know and I uh, just kinda worry about I'm in Texarkana so this would be more important to me or you could zoom out a bit or quite a bit Anyways, that's uh, basically how it works. Uh, there, of course, there's other images. Uh, you know, these are all images. Uh, different, uh, different bands use different. Uh, it's looking at different cloud heights and. Uh, there's you know there are di different instruments different bands uh, I don't have it all completely figured out but but anyways I hope uh, I hope this information uh, helps you Stephen and uh, I hope somebody else can get some uh, useful information uh, out of this as well I guess uh, we'll go ahead and uh, say 73's uh, from KI5 BZO